video will demonstrate the proper procedures for making grout cubes for compression strength testing on NCDOT projects. ASHTO T106 is the specification that governs how grout samples are made. Grout cube specimens are made in two inch cube molds with each mold fixture having no more than three compartments. Molds are preferably constructed of hard metal that does not react with the cement grout and are rigid to resist deflection while the cubes are formed. At NCDOT, plastic molds are commonly used for field sampling. However, they are more prone to deflection and thus require careful use to ensure quality cubes are made. Prepare the molds correctly to ensure leak tightness. If not, samples will lose moisture and may affect the compressive strength results. To prepare the mold, seal mold walls to the base plate by applying petroleum jelly or light cup grease to the entire contact surface of the base. Seal the mold halves by applying the sealant to both contact surfaces. Use sufficient grease to ensure a small amount is extruded from the joint when the halves are pressed together. Be sure to remove the excess grease. Then clamp the base to the molds and wipe off the excess jelly. This is especially critical for the plastic molds as the base can bow, creating a significant gap for moisture to escape between the mold halves and the base. Complete the assembly of the mold and tighten all screws. Wipe the inside walls and corners, being careful to remove any excess grease. Next, spray the mold surfaces with a release agent or apply oil or grease using an impregnated cloth. Wipe away excess material with a cloth, leaving only a slight residue that would leave a fingerprint if touched. If using brass molds, after cleaning sufficiently, follow the same steps of sealing, assembling, and lubricating prior to making the grout cubes. Molding of the specimen should begin within two and a half minutes of completion of mixing the grout. The grout should be added to the molds in two separate layers. Apply the first layer approximately half full in each of the cube compartments. For plastic grout, tamp the grout in each compartment eight times over four rounds following the pattern shown for a total of 32 times. Enough pressure should be applied while tamping to ensure consolidation of the first layer. Once the first layer of grout has been tamped in each mold compartment, fill each mold with the top layer of grout and tamp as performed in the first layer. While tamping, grout will be forced out onto the top of the mold. Reincorporate this grout into the second layer using the tamper or a glove finger after each round of tamping. Once tamping has been completed, the grout should slightly overfill the molds. Strike off the top of each mold with the flat side of a trowel at 90 degrees to the length of the mold. Next, draw the flat side of the trowel lightly over the cubes and along the length of the mold to level and smooth the surfaces. Cut off the grout to create a plain surface flush with the top of the mold by drawing the straight edge of the trowel in a sawing motion over the top of the mold. Using a wet rag, wipe off any excess grout from the top of the mold. When making samples for flowable or fluid grout, follow the same procedures as for plastic grout, but instead of using the tamper, Use a glove finger to puddle each layer a minimum of five times to consolidate the grout. Cover the freshly molded grout with a cover plate if provided with the mold. 
or carefully place the mold in a plastic bag. A wet paper towel or rag should be placed in the bag to create a moist curing environment. A wet rag can also be placed directly over the sample. Tie the bag to help retain moisture and place the samples in a level and secure location that includes protection from direct sunlight and freezing or excessive hot temperatures, such as a cooler. When placed in the field, ensure that it is placed on a level surface and away from all construction activity. Carefully demold the samples after a period of 24 plus or minus 4 hours. Once removed from the mold, inspect the cubes for any damage. If the high cams number is known, write it directly on the cubes. The cubes can then be placed in a watertight container and a wet rag or paper towel placed with the cubes to create a moist environment. Prior to delivering the sample to the lab, the high cams number should be written on the outside of the container. If storing the cubes in a plastic bag, do not fill with water as this can burst and leak. The 2018 specifications created five categories of grout. It is critical that the type of grout being sampled be noted on the sample card. The sample requirements can also be found on this chart. Please remember that any early break cubes should be in addition to these sample requirements.